Hi everyone, I hope you're well. This is the overview for the program and presentation aspects of Project 2. The very first thing I want to demonstrate is what you'll do in No Machine to get a copy of the Project 2 demo program here into your DMC 105 folder so that you can look at it in Spider and run it. Okay, so let me go to the No Machine desktop. So what you need to do is to open Monte Terminal, single click there, and run the command. All right. DMC 105 PRJ2. Okay, so that's DMC 10, not O, 5 PRJ2. And that will copy. Where was I? I got lost. That will copy the Project 2 demo file into your DMC 105 folder. So let's look for that. Okay, then when you're finished, you can type exit to make the Monte Terminal window go away. Okay. So we open Spider. And go to Open File. There it is, Project 2 Demo. Okay. So you read those comments and your Project 2 program will start off the same way. You will import NFWBS and then write the line just like we did with the NSFG data, except it will be NFWBS.getData. Okay, so here's an example of the finding a function to compute a mean and return the mean, and then use it twice. So note that uh, the inputs that I chose were the NFWBS data and uh, the generation that I wanted um, the function to compute the mean for. In this example, I'm using the SWB underscore two field, which is the question I'm optimistic about my future. Okay, so this should run just fine. And there's less NFWBS data than there was of NSFG data. So the program will run more quickly. And here are the two means. Okay, so you can, you can create a completely new program for your project too, or maybe just piggyback off of this, start from this, maybe uh, save it as project2.py so that you still have a copy of the demo program. I think that's what I would, would recommend. Um, just go to file, save as, and get rid of demo. That way you still have Project 2 demo to look at if need be. When you save it, when you do the save as, uh, then you can start modifying things uh, in here to work with the fields that you're working with in your project. Right? It's not real likely that you're using the same field and and generations, right? So you will need to make modifications okay going back to the canvas site okay so remember the computational thinking patterns collected document is all the way at the top in canvas under textbooks you have that to refer to okay the project description is here the mfwbs codebook with all the details of the fields that you're using is here. We've dealt with the Project 2 demo program. And if you do uh, what I uh, demonstrated, 
at the very beginning of the video. You'll have a copy of this program in your DMC 105 folder that you can use. We'll take a look at this project two function hints in a minute, along with the project description. And then here are the two submission links for your program and your presentation. Okay, so the program itself, worth 60 points, is due on May 11th. The presentation, which we'll talk about uh, when we go through the project description, is due on May 12th, and that's 20 points. The presentation counts as your final experience. Um, so you'll just be creating the presentation and uploading it. Because we're not meeting face to face, you won't be giving your presentation. Um, if any of you really would like to give your presentation, I'm happy to set up a Zoom meeting where we can do that, just let me know, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the project description again and the project two function hits. Okay, so first with the project description. All right, so from the top. Right, we've already done that project proposal. You can refer back to that. So you remember the question you're studying and what fields and values should be cleaned you'll be working with. And for your program, if you're working alone, you have to write at least three functions. One of them uh, can certainly be mean. I think most of you in your proposals would that you would be computing means. So you can use that project to demo as as a reminder of how to compute a mean. If you're working with a partner, your Python program has to contain at least four functions. In both these cases, these are functions that you've defined. If you're working with a partner, each partner is responsible for writing two of the functions. Okay. And remember, only one, if you're working with a partner, only one of you needs to submit the program. But uh, in, a, in a comment at the beginning of the program, please include uh, the names of both partners. And for the presentation, you should be able to do this within six slides. But if you're giving the presentation, it should be about five minutes long. Uh, I said no longer than five minutes. And your slide should cover the questions you decided to study, what measures you computed, and any conclusions that you draw from you know, the, the measures you computed in view of the questions you studied. Okay, and again, if you're working with a partner, only one of you needs to submit the presentation. Make sure that the names of both partners are on the presentation's title page. Okay, so you should do this in, in PowerPoint. Uh, there's, uh, just like we have um, LibreOffice of Writer on No Machine, which is a substitute for Microsoft Word. The machine also has a presentation program if you don't have PowerPoint available yourself. Okay, now let's take a look at the function hints document. Okay, so this is here to help remind you when you're working on functions to compute the measures which labs to go back and take a look at. So remember, for the most part, actually in all cases, that the labs provide the background for working on the projects. For the labs where we were working with uh, probabilities, helped us with the machine learning project. And the other labs help with this project. Okay, so 
If you're writing a function to compute and return a mean, look at that Project 2 example program. Also, go back and look at Lab 2, the Assignment 1 program, where the function that you write will use the NFWBS data as its input. And as you saw in the uh, Project 2 example program, you could also potentially use uh, a demographic value as a second input to the program. Okay, so if you're going to compute and return a standard deviation, go back and look at the code you wrote in Lab 3, Assignment 2. That's where we um, did, did, remember, the var sum after computing the mean in order to compute a standard deviation. Okay, so a uh, standard deviation function would take the NFWBS data as an input as well as the mean returned by the mean function. Okay, so to show you what that would look like, don't forget, um, so after these output statements, right, to get mean into a variable so that I can use that variable as an input to standard deviation. I need to write a line of code like oh, boomer mean equals mean data comma two. Or two is the generation code for, for boomers. Okay, and now I could use boomer mean as an input to a standard deviation function. Okay, if you're going to be working with frequency counts in order to produce a histogram, you could write a function that just computes the frequency counts and returns a dictionary containing the frequency counts. So you start with the weights list function from lab 11, which remember produced a list modify it so that instead of creating an empty list and appending things to the list, it creates an empty dictionary and does frequency counting. We can go back and look at lab 10, assignment one, to get the details on creating the dictionary and then doing uh, the frequency counts with the dictionary. Okay, so if, you're, if you're, one of your measures is going to be a histogram, look back at lab four, assignment two. So this function's input would be the dictionary of frequency counts produced from, by this function. Okay, so again, the, uh, the dictionary output by this function you'd have to store into a dictionary so that you can use that dictionary stored in a variable uh, as input to the histogram function. And for a fifth example of a function you could use, you could compute and return a percentile to get quartiles and median. Look at the percentile function you wrote for, for lab 11. Okay, and this this function will also use a dictionary of frequency counts. Right, so four and five work together with three um, in order to in order to do their work. Okay. So that's the that completes the overview. Right, we've gone over the project program. A project presentation. I've given you hints of where to look back to as you're working with your functions. And we've gone over everything in Canvas for project two. Okay, that completes the overview. You all take care. Bye.